What's up everybody? Welcome to Balkan Moto. In today's episode, we're gonna start dealing with cleaning up the handlebars. So let's check it out. Okay, so this is how the handlebars look currently. I mean, if we were to sit on the bike, this is kind of what the rider sees when we're on there. And my plan is to clean this all up. So the uh, starter buttons are gonna be positioned elsewhere. The throttle would be an internal throttle, so we're not gonna see the throttle cables coming out like this. Probably gonna be replacing the master uh, brake cylinder for the front brake and the lever to something a little bit more minimalistic. We'll see what we're gonna do with the mirrors. Then on this side, choke is gonna be relocated. The buttons are all gonna be built into the bar. Uh, the clutch is gonna be moved completely out off the bar. Uh, and again, with the mirror set up, we'll see how we're gonna uh, deal with that. But for starters, let's deal with these two buttons. So the plan for the kill switch and the starter button is to move them down here. So this cover right now is the uh, battery box cover uh, and it has quite a bit of hollow space and I've bought some uh, low profile buttons that we're gonna install right here. Let's take a look at those and uh, start measuring out how we're gonna drill this cover and install them there. Okay, so these are the buttons that I purchased and you can see they're kind of really low profile so once mounted, they're very, very small. Uh, they are quite deep um, and they plug into these uh, I forgot the name of these uh, particular plugs are, but uh, essentially once plugged in, they're quite long. So we're looking at something. Yeah, come on, line up. Doing this with one hand is a bit of a pain. There we go. So that's how much clearance we need. Uh, in terms of the two buttons, uh, they are different in the sense that uh, one is a self-canceling and one isn't. So the left one is uh, self-canceling. As you can see, it kind of pops back up to the same spot. Uh, so that we're gonna use for the starter button. And this one, which is, uh, is actually locking for the kill switch. Uh, and the idea is that these will be mounted uh, kind of inside of this box and kind of fit nice and clean uh, just right up against that kind of on top of each other like that so I can just reach down press the two buttons and start the bike or kill this kill the bike okay so let's take out this cover and take a look at how we're doing with space in there all right so this is what the space looks like and the idea is that these buttons will kind of get tucked in right behind here and that will place them kind of box was back on like so it would kind of place them right here so there would be very much something like uh, this on there okay so let's just measure um, the distance from kind of like this lip here and the connection point uh, down so that we can kind of evaluate where this the distance from this thing here to the little ledge here so that we know where to put these so they are actually tucked in and not in front of this um, and then we'll measure out that onto here and then start drilling so that so after measuring things um, the measurement I came up with is from the hole so from here uh, we need to go uh, 53 millimeters down and then from the same spot we need to go 17 millimeters in and that's kind of like once that's where we're going to get clearance so that would be the left edge of the hole um, or slightly after that so let's kind of measure out where exactly these holes need to be space them out to account for the size of the buttons themselves uh, so they're probably going to be like around, around here somewhere uh, and then drill them 
Okay, I have made the holes uh, as big as three eighths of an inch, which is uh, just about nine, nine and a bit millimeters. Uh, I need to get to 16 in order to get these in there. Uh, so in order to widen these, I'm gonna use the Dremel kit uh, and some of the tools available in it to widen that hole. So let's find some of the tools here and use those. Okay, I drilled out the one of the holes just to get a test fit. And yeah, the button is nicely hidden away. Once I widen the other one, I'll put the other one. I think the order in which I'm gonna put them is I'm gonna put the kill switch on top and the starter button at the bottom. Reason for that is it's really close to the exhaust and I'd rather not be reaching down uh, touching the bottom one uh, when I wanna kill uh, the bike. Well, they have quick access to it. So, kill switch on top, uh, start on the bottom. All right, two holes are done. Let's take off the tape, clean this up, put the uh, buttons on there, and let's test fit on the bike. All right, looks pretty clean. The buttons are nicely hidden away. Uh, they're right here, and we have the top one is the kill switch. So, to turn on the bike, we would turn it on. Press the bottom one, that should start the bike, release it, bike should be running. Once done, click the top one again, turns off the motorcycle. So that's nice, it's, they're very hidden away, you can't even tell they're there, unless you know they're there. And even when you do know they're there, they kind of just look like part of the bike. Nothing special about them. Uh, so these are supposed to replace the big red button and the starter button here, and essentially this entire cluster. Um, Next, we're gonna take a look at uh, the cables that run inside this line. Uh, and we're gonna take out the, essentially the kill switch and the ignition switch wires and reroute them back under the tank down to the buttons. Uh, we're gonna leave just the uh, brake uh, signal in here. And then in future episodes, I have uh, more parts coming that will replace the entire cluster from the top. But until then, uh, we're going to have the cluster at the top and the buttons at the bottom. This will do nothing. All right, let's get uh, looking at these cables. All right, so I opened up the button cluster and uh, we have a red black, a red white, which go to the kill switch. Uh, the red black goes to the cutoff really and the ignition coils. The red white goes to the the main starter relay. Um, then we have a black and a blue white, which are, they go to the starter, uh, uh, like the ignition starter. Uh, the black is the ground, the blue white is the actual on. Um, and then to the, uh, these, these two here, uh, they go to the brake signal, which is uh, again, a green yellow and a brown uh, signal um, and those uh, just hook up to that so the plan is to unhook the black and blue white as well as the uh, two red cables and fish them out of that main cable uh, and uh, take them uh, to uh, hook them up to the buttons but what I'll do first is I'm going to disconnect them from the cluster uh, and I'm gonna try hooking them up to the buttons, uh, to the spare buttons that I have, uh, just to test that these things can actually work before I decide to unwire everything and uh, go on forward with the project. So let's cut them up, hook them up. All right, so we got the sketchy wiring going and a few buttons. Let's see if uh, we can start the bike. So, yeah. All right, ignition on. It's priming. It starts and it kills it. Perfect, buttons work. All right, let's unhook this <laughs> madness and uh, start fishing out the cables so we can run them to the back. All right, so cable is loose. The tank is off and the cable actually ends up going behind here and 
I'd imagine it's one of these in here. So, we need to find where the end of that cable is. And we're gonna pull out these four cables. Uh, the black, the blue and white, and the red and white and red and black. I'm gonna fish them out. Then we're gonna see how long they can go. Hopefully, they can go across, kind of following the existing harness, down to where the new buttons are. Uh, if they can't, we're gonna lengthen them and run them to the buttons. So let's open up some of this plastic and find where the cable is. All right, so I fished out the cable and I pulled out the four cables we're interested in. Uh, and this thing was being plugged in kind of like under here. So from about here, these cables need to make it, so let's say from there, kind of like following the, uh, the rest of the stuff. We can go down to there and maybe make it. Uh, I think we're gonna be like an inch or two too short and I'd rather have a little bit more slack. So probably gonna need to extend them a little bit at the end, but that's honestly not that bad. Uh, I'm actually gonna put some uh, shrink tubing on top just so we can have it a little bit more protected. Uh, and then it should just literally plug back in. On this end, I might just shorten this. I cut off this last piece and just put the tips back onto here so this kind of goes like this directly. Um, but uh, let's uh, actually, let's unplug them so I can work. Eh. Come on. Eh. My God, how is this? Okay, I'll just pull those off and we'll work with these on the bench. All right, I lengthened the cables by a good foot or so. That will give him plenty to work with. Uh, now let's put some uh, tubing on them. And I think I'm actually gonna uh, pair them up. So the, the two reds and the black and the blue uh, will be together. So the black and the blue are still black and blue. The reds, uh, the red black becomes just solid red and the red white becomes yellow. Uh, so I'll pair those up, two separate tubes. Uh, and uh, then we're gonna look at how things are fitting on the bike uh, and route them, uh, set up the um, ends uh, on them. So these uh, blue. Uh, clips uh, and uh, connectors, whatever they're called, uh, and run them to the back of the uh, buttons. So let's tube them up. All right, so I split up the two cables, got them uh, tubed uh, and extended. So we have them here, right there. So let's test fit to see how much of that length we actually need. Uh, and then we're gonna uh, pretty much place it on the bike and hook up the uh, connectors. So I plugged in the cable back into its original spot, tucked it in, then I ran the cables into the uh, existing zip ties. So you have these two cables here, kind of following the frame on this side, tucked in nicely up here and then down below. And we have plenty of slack to work with to wire in the two buttons down here. So let's close up some of this stuff at the front and bring this back up. Um, we're gonna deal with reducing this uh, in the next episode uh, when I do the throttle. For now, we're just gonna kind of clip it to the existing clips and hook it up to the brake so that the brake signal works. Um, so yeah, let's get that in place and then move on to wiring the uh, two clips down there. All right, I wired up uh, the first of the connectors. Um, <laughs> as with, uh, as to be expected, the buying stuff from AliExpress uh, may or may not work properly. Um, so these blue connectors, while they do fit the specifications for connecting to the buttons, and they are able to connect to the buttons, the little holes to put the wires with the, um, these, uh, <coughs> Where is it? 
with uh, these little um, uh, metal brass connectors or copper, whatever they are, um, are actually not the same size. The, the holes are slightly narrower and the little ledge in there that the uh, back out clip is supposed to kind of like lodge itself against uh, is much shorter. So I have to like squeeze the little uh, metal pieces tighter so they can fit in the holes and then shorten the little pin on them so that they can actually click in. Either way, um, I'm just gonna add some electrical tape on here to cover up uh, the terminals at the back uh, and this will be tucked in nicely right behind here, like so. Um, so let's do that and then uh, you can see kind of how much I cut off uh, from the cable. Uh, I'll do the same for this one uh, and uh, we should be good to go. All right, both cables are wired up. I've marked one with the pencil so I know which one it is. That's the uh, kill switch and that's the starter uh, ignition. So let's hook them up, close everything up and uh, test it. And here it is, uh, fully uh, installed. The wires are nice and clean and tucked in everywhere. Uh, and just a quick test, if we do ignition, so lights are on. We prime. That works. Okay, let's put the tank back on, seat back on. Let's take it outside and get it actually started. All right, back is uh, fully back together. Let's see if we'll start with the new buttons. So, ignition, priming, and starts and runs. Just like new, and the top stuff does nothing. So let's let that warm up a bit. Take it for a quick ride just to make sure that the button doesn't get unlocked while I'm riding and just kills the engine. Because that is like one concern that I had, but I don't think it would. Um, as for up here, I mean the brake is still kind of wired like this, but this will clean up, we'll internally wire it into the bar. So this cable will not be visible at all next time. Uh, brake still works. So it's all good. All right guys, I just test rode the bike. The buttons work beautifully. They don't disengage. Um, they're starting the bike. They're uh, turning off the ignition. They're perfect and they're nicely hidden away. Uh, no more need for this big cluster up here. So make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications when new videos become available. Uh, check me out on Instagram at bakonmoto2018 and check out bakonmoto.com. In the next episode, we're gonna be doing the internal throttle and cleaning up this even more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.